Prophet Muhammad was a good man even before he received revelation. He was an honorable man of good character. The Quran said he had sublime morals. He was sympathetic, he was generous, he was faithful, he was forgiving, he was courageous, he was steadfast. Yes. But he was a white man. Is that a problem? See, it's only a problem if goodness to you is measured by the color of a one person's skin. You got a problem. Because he was white complected. Mm. But yet was all of this that the Quran says he was. And there was a black man in Arabia from Ethiopia that heard that he was preaching the oneness of God. He already believed in the oneness of God, but he wanted to meet this man, this light-complected man. They call it fair skin. What the hell is fair about it? See, that's part of the sickness of racism that has infected Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. Because if you're light-skinned, you're fair-skinned, does that mean you can be fair in a white skin? Does it mean that you are automatically fair because you have quote-unquote fair skin? black man saw him and heard him and believed in him and became one of his strongest supporters and followers and when they came to Muhammad and said Bilal is saying uh, something it's like a call you know? Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. God is great. Yes, sir. And when they heard his melodious voice and they told the prophet, he said, Make that the call to prayer. And then, listen, now I'm about to close, but listen, Prophet Muhammad said, he heard the footsteps of Bilal going into paradise ahead of his own. Now I close. See, he heard Bilal, a black man, going into paradise ahead of him. How could that be? And you are the prophet of Allah. How could that be? It means that Muhammad was an Arab. And after Muhammad gave the Quran to the Arabs and the Arabs were to spread it to the ends of the earth, the Arabs became corrupt. See, racism has affected them. Ain't no question about it. It has affected the Jews. It has affected those who call themselves Christians. So when they do good for you, you got to look at the motivation. Yes, sir. That's right. They'll build a mega church for you. Uh-huh. 
Come on, come on. But what is the intention? That's right. They send you to Africa to preach, but what is the intention? You are a people that are deceived by outward appearance of good. That's right. Yes, sir. So what the prophet saw would in the last days God would choose a foolish people to be his own. They were lost among a strange people in a strange land but God heard the Bible says their moaning and their groaning in a, according to their taskmaster and look at the words he said I think I will go down now and see whether their cry is all together what I have heard he's not sending no prophet he's coming himself to see about a people that have been catching hell for 400 years not under good men Come on. But under evil men and women masquerading. Yeah. But among them were a few good men that wanted to see black people free. We thank God for those few good men. We thank God that through the dark night of slavery, he brought us through. We never could have made it. We never could have made it if he was not with us. I thank God for the Christian church because the slave master allowed us to have church. The slave master took the gifted speakers among us, not the good people, but the gifted speakers. Uh -huh. My God is a big difference between oration and goodness. And they were to preach that which would make them better tools of service for the master. Nat Turner was a preacher, but not that kind. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yes, sir. Not that kind. Uh-huh. Then Mark Vesey knew uh -huh. the Bible, but he wasn't that kind of preacher. Toussaint Louverture. Good men who knew something about God and a willingness to sacrifice to make life better for those coming behind. Huh? So what did you see, Prophet Muhammad? I saw the sun rising in the west as it rose in the east. <clears throat> What does that mean? It doesn't mean that the sun would reverse its course. It only means that as revelation from God came always from the east shining toward the west. Now God was going to reverse that and raise up men and women in the west out of the people of Bilal that would call the world back to the true worship of God. Yes, sir. You are messed up. We are messed up. But we are a beautiful people. You know, just sitting here this morning, listening to the songs of praise, See what you bring 
out of the beauty of your hearts and your love for God. You have naturally got it, but it has to be continuously nurtured. Yes. See, you got a heart. Listen to me good. If anybody white suffered from your hands what you suffered from theirs, do you think they would marry into your family? They wouldn't even want to see your shadow. But look at you. Look at you. When they ache, you ache. You can't see a white baby crying and not feel that pain. You got a beautiful heart. It's just in need of purification yes, sir. Yes, sir. but once God purifies us then we can go into all the world and you're gonna preach not that gospel that's right but a new gospel because the scripture said behold oh. I make oh. All things new. There'll be a new heaven and a new earth and the former things will pass away. So when you really know Christ, I ain't talking about talking about him. I'm not talking about singing about him. I'm not talking about praising his name. I'm talking about getting acquainted with him. When you really know him, you become a new creature. Yes, sir. You're not the same old Negro. You're not messed up in your head over your color. Oh. You become a new creature by the transformation of your mind. So, I honor these few good men today and I hope that God will allow us to ascend that ladder to be among the select few yes. My God. My God. see Come on. because God don't need many to turn the world around he just sometimes needs one good man. Every prophet of God, though one person was able to do magnificent things in the name and with the help of God. So all of us today are called to do what is apparently impossible, to raise our people from the mental dead to overcome the adversity of a negative world to plant and nurture the seed of a new world and overcome all opposition to the truth of that word that will bring in the kingdom until that truth is firmly established